So it was around mid to late November in 2022, and I was around Saint Louis Square in Montreal. It was a snowy day, and there are a lot of squirrels here hunting for food. They're probably the chubbiest squirrel I've ever seen in my life. Ooh, they're always begging for food when they see humans. These colorful houses around St. Louis Square are very unique. And uh, yeah, remember I, I painted this fountain view in autumn. And now the fountain is shut down because it's winter now. And here I'm walking across the street to White Heron Cafe. So the same area, the same view could look really different from season to season, including the atmospheres, the color schemes. And here I'm walking in. It's pretty quiet in there. So I ordered two pastries, a brownie and a madeleine with a cup of latte. Of course, I did a sketch before consuming them. And looking around, I think I'm going to sketch a different window view this time. I'm going to sketch this famous Salvador Dali mural and a bit of the street on the left. So the street view on the left is actually a bit um, chaotic because of the construction site and all of those stuff there. So out of the chaos, I'm still able to find some focusing objects. For example, the lamp post with the street signs on the very left and connecting it with the bottom uh, curb line and uh, a couple of construction cones. After those little foreground objects, I'm beginning to draw the contour outlines of the buildings in the back. So you have to see through the layers of objects that starts with the ones in the front first and then go, go to the ones in the middle ground or the background. After the contour outline of this building, I'm starting to draw the vertical rows of windows. And drawing this uh, middle building, the little roof pieces in small and short segments. And um, this part of the buildings is being interrupted by this tree. So I'm drawing the uh, large branches and twigs with very gentle pressure and loose lines. And then going back to this building in the middle to start adding some essential inner details. For example, the rooftop lines in triangular forms, and also these birdhouse shaped attic windows popping out from the surface of the houses and adding these, uh, this division bar between the upper floor and the middle floor. Adding some more lines that I see. This is another, a, a kind of prism, a birdhouse shape popping out from the surface of the house on top. Yeah, so this kind of attic structure is very um, special in, in Montreal residential buildings. Adding some more, as you can see, my lines are getting looser as I'm drawing those things in the distance. Now I'm drawing the contour outline of this um, evergreen tree, which is very much an organic cone shape. Drawing the foliage outline and a bit of uh, branches showing in the middle. And now I'm starting to draw this man walking past by. So he disappeared within a few seconds, so I kind of used my memory to finish drawing him. There's a bit of a mental image left um, in my head. Uh, this person walks away. Adding a bit of denser lines for the tree there and a bit of um, fuzzy details there in the distance. Some more winter foliage lines and adding a bit of uh, texture for this evergreen tree. And afterwards, I'm moving on to the right side of this tree. There's more uh, rooftop line there for the end of this row of houses. And um, on the very end, 
there is another tree. It's looking a little shorter and a tiny bit smaller because of distance. And drawing this stop sign and the pole supporting it. Now I'm connecting um, the, the very thin gap between the stop sign pole and this main building with the uh, Salvador Dali mural on the right hand side. It's pretty easy to connect this because there's only a tiny gap between the left side of this building and the stop sign. And after drawing the main vertical line, I'm starting to fill in with the details, the sign of this store and the entrance area. Starting to add the upper floor angles. So now, as you can see, I'm kind of running out of space to draw the rooftop area of this building, and that's okay. When we're sketching spontaneously, drawing uh, freehand without any pre-planning is okay. So sometimes if we're running out of space, just let it go. Just keep drawing. Just keep drawing to include as much uh, stuff as you can. Okay, it, it could happen. Okay, we're humans and we can't be perfect all the time. And actually it's pretty interesting this way. It makes this building look so much so much larger by having the top cut off a little bit. And now I'm adding these attic windows. These shapes are very straightforward because there's no perspective or anything. Just a bunch of rectangles and denser lines inside the window frames. Adding these tabs, very common on classical buildings around the eave area. And adding some more very thin designs around the eave area. These wooden bars, probably. Tabs in short and long shapes. And now I'm moving on to the uh, corner of this building. So there's a window and using a bit of hatching line to show the shade of the glassy surface. Now I'm moving in to draw the inner details, these uh, smaller rectangles of the, uh, the glass panels. And again, using very simple hatching lines to suggest shade. And also a little um, harder pressure for darker shades. So now I am using a 0 0.8 fine liner pen and I will keep using this same pen for the rest of this sketch. As you can see, you could be very uh, flexible when you're, using, when you're using the same pen by controlling the pressure to create different line densities. And now I'm just quickly drawing this person walking past by and then start to draw these windows. Yeah, and these windows are very easy to draw. Anyone can do it. There's no um, rules about perspective or anything. Just a straightforward view of, of these windows. And again, hatching lines with slightly gentle pressure and denser pressure to uh, create different illusions of uh, shadow densities. And now I'm starting to draw the portrait of Salvador Dali, nice and big. The hair, the shape of hair. And um, it's actually paper pasted onto the, uh, the wall of this building. So it's peeling off a little bit. On top of the mural, another artist is collaborating with this mural artist by putting a smiley face sticker on there around the forehead of Dali. Now drawing the eyebrow and the eye. And the other eye is actually a bit covered by the smiley face sticker the nose, so drawing slowly, tracing the shape out, and a bit of mustache. Yeah, and I just found, you know, drawing portraits of man with mustache and beard, uh, so much fun to do. And I also found it easier to draw someone with mustache and beard. I think somehow you could hide a, a bit of uh, defects of, of your drawing. And um, okay. Now I'm moving on to the neck area. As I mentioned before, uh, this mural is done by uh, collaging paper together. So the paper is peeling off. And um, yeah, I keep drawing some more details, the sections of attic windows on, around the rooftop area and the brick texture. There's a little hood over here and the outline of the window and the windowsill. 
the bars of window frames with denser lines and very relaxing hatching lines to suggest shade. Again, controlling the pressure just so you could do so much with the same pen. And just keep adding, just finish the corner, upper corner of the uh, rooftop area and the bars and the tabs and then moving around. So when I'm sketching, I don't plan where to start adding the details. I just go um, according to how, how I feel. So there's a lot of freedom. So if I sketch this same view again, uh, my drawing process is going to be different. In other words, there's no right or wrong way about where to start a sketch. So maybe next time, when I'm revisiting this place in the summertime, I might start sketching this main building first and not uh, th those rows of residential buildings on the left. Okay, so this is what I mean by there's no right or wrong way to start and uh, to, to keep the process going. And if you were with me on the same day sketching in this cafe together, I would encourage you to use your own sense uh, to, to think about where you want to start this sketch and your composition. It doesn't need to be exactly the same as mine. Okay, so this is how I teach my students that they don't have to follow the exact same procedure as a teacher. So maybe you want to sketch this scenery using a brush pen or a chisel tip pen or maybe a different color fine liner pen, maybe a blue fine liner pen or a dark brown fine liner pen. It's really up to you. Okay, so there's so many, there's actually thousands of thousands of possibilities of, um, you know, how to sketch the same view. My imagery is, yeah, just one of the many, many possibilities. And if I come back to the same spot to sketch this again, I will change, maybe I'll change to a different kind of pen, uh, color scheme, and also the composition as well. Okay, so now I am going back to those uh, residential houses and starting to add more windows and uh, fill in some of the window panels with black ink. Just so those houses have a really strong sense of depth that there are rooms behind these exterior walls. And these lines of the piles of snow is very important that suggest the perspective of the road. And now I'm starting to add these um, bushes sticking out from the piles of snow. So when drawing these stalks, I'm just focusing on the growth and not necessarily capturing every single piece of stalk and just let go. I'm starting to add more essential lines that defines the perspective of the street and some minor details for these houses to show that they're pretty rustic. Adding the accentuation for the trunk of the evergreen tree so it stands out better. and adding more soft details for those trees. And now I'm starting to draw pretty quick lines to, for the uh, brick pattern on the exterior of this main building. And when drawing the brick pattern of this large area, I'm just doing the uh, horizontal lines first very quickly. They don't have to be perfect straight lines. And I'm also using very gentle pressure so this pattern is not um, way too strong and competing with the, the shapes of the windows and other essential details of this building, especially the mural. Yeah, and just take it easy. We don't, you don't have to make perfect straight lines. None, none of my lines in my urban sketches are perfect. And now I'm just drawing this uh, graffiti on the bottom of this building. And some final brick patterns in between these, these two persons. And I think that's very much it. Yeah, so here is the look of my finished line work. This one took me about like uh, 40 minutes to draw. 
And now it's time to paint watercolors. So I just wet the sky area first with clear water, but then I decided to paint uh, the warm yellow tone for the buildings. So it's really nice for these buildings to have these warm colors because the sky above and the snowy street below is going to be containing a lot of cold neutral grays. So when I'm painting like everything, I want to achieve a good balance of warm and cold colors. So if a painting only contains warm colors or only cold colors, it's not that interesting to look at because there's no contrast. And now I am adding a bit of um, bluish gray for the rooftop area. So I mix uh, my own bluish gray with ultramarine blue or cobalt blue with a bit of uh, royal purple to punch in these neutral tones. And also mix in a bit of uh, leftover brown for the shaded area, usually around the bottom of the buildings. Okay, now it's time to move on to painting the sky. Just re-wetting the area with clear water and then grabbing a bit of cobalt blue. Dilute it. And just let this color bloom nice and soft. So as you can see, I am giving myself a lot of freedom in painting this uh, flat area of the uh, overcast winter day sky. I'm using some uh, brushstroke gestures to give this sky some turbulence because as I always mention in my other videos, the sky is never flat. And okay, and now I'm ready to move on to add some more vibrant colors for this evergreen tree with lime green and also a bit of uh, burnt sienna mixed with uh, verdant green. Playing around with these different shades of greens. Nothing, in, nothing in the world is of a singular color or tone, especially for foliages. You know, from the first sight when we're looking at, at the tree, it's green. But if you look more deeply, it contains so many shades of greens. And I just used the wet into wet technique to paint this tree in the middle. So it, it had a really nice fuzzy effect for the foliages. Okay, moving on, I'm just grabbing some, some neutral grays to paint these areas uh, with thinner snows. So this area contains like slushy snow, a little bit muddy in between the higher piles. Because it's an overcast day without any sunshine, there are a lot of these light to medium grays around these piles of snow. So if it's a sunny day, there's probably going to be way less of these grays. So it could be pretty tricky to paint on an overcast day because it's really hard to show contrast. On a sunny day, it's easier because the sunshine is going to divide the different areas of light and shade for us in a really dramatic way. Adding a bit of contrast there around that, the other side of the pile of snow and then quickly adding these orange reds for the stripes and the cone. It's really important to have those warm colors that pops out around the middle to make this sketch more interesting to look at. A bit of leftover gray around the top of, of the trees. And for the sidewalk here, the concrete color in between the snow. Okay, now it's time to move on to this main building. So I'm just wetting the whole building area with clear water because I really want a soft um, orange brown for the brick color. This is a mix of burnt sienna and a tiny bit of orange. As you can see, I'm just laying this color very loosely. So in certain areas, the, the tone of orange-brown is slightly different. And also, um, these different tones of browns kind of suggest the uneven relief of the bricks stacked up on a wall. And also using more choppy brush strokes to suggest those singular pieces of brick in between 
and this mural is pretty worn out because it's actually just pieces of paper pasted onto the wall and they just add a bit of uh, skin color using the Latour Brown diluted for the face of Dali and then I used actually the leftover deep gray containing less water for the hair and using the same medium gray for, for these window areas to show the atmosphere of a cold winter day. Okay, so right now it's around the final stage of painting this sketch. So I'm trying to add more sense of relief for this main building by have you know some colors you know that pops out for the brick area and also some stronger grays on these windows and on the murals and painting some of the outfits of these people with a vibrant red and um, a strong blue there. So that really attract the viewer's attention. Those buildings on the left they could be pretty simply done and they look a little flat compared to the one in the foreground. All right, so here is a look of my finished sketch. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. I hope you all had a great uh, Christmas with your family and friends. So I'm making these sketches and videos as life memories for myself. After many months and years, I'm going to be watching these videos again and see how far I've gone in my life and creative journey. And I'm going to miss the metro stations in Montreal. Okay, see you next time, everyone.